Mm. Whoa, thanks, Melissa. Wow. That takes you back, huh? <laughs> ah, so I've looked at life from both sides now, from win and lose, and still somehow, it's life's illusion, I recall. I really don't know life at all. Maybe that's what the Buddhists would call the open mind. I don't know life at all. I want to figure this thing out, but it kind of is like a mystery to be lived rather than a problem to be solved. Have you noticed that? So we come here to a consciousness like a unity church to learn about life, to understand that life's a school and, and we're learning how to be with both sides and not make anything wrong, but make everything an opportunity to know more of the great soul that you are. Both sides, both sides now. Our series, we're in the seventh week, we're two thirds through our series. It's called Being in Balance. And this lovely woman, Kara, who I had lunch with this week, reminded me that uh, balance is a verb and not a noun that balance is an experience that we're, we're learning how to be in balance, and often the way you learn to be in balance is to recognize how you're not in balance. Have you noticed that? Is that just me? Right? So we're learning how to be in balance, and that balance is something that, that we're, we are constantly, hmm, how does this feel? How does this feel? Like I was talking to a lady last week that was in a relationship that seemed to really be a positive one, rather than all the other ones she'd been in. And she called me and she said, you know, I feel kind of nauseous. And I said, well, yeah, because you've been over here for so long and now you've actually manifested what you like and feels kind of weird. You know, that this whole being in balance has its moments of not feeling so comfortable until we learn something new. So the chapter this week is called, It's Hard to See the Light While We're Analyzing the Darkness. It's hard to have an experience of life working when we really have this lifestyle of focusing on figuring it out, analyzing this old way of seeing life. And, you know, we've heard analysis is paralysis. So we'd like to kind of lighten up around this whole story of what isn't working, so we just have a little bit of space to see what is working. Because a lot of us learned about right and wrong and good and bad, and, we, and I need to be okay and something needs to be wrong with you, for this is how we learned about life. Let me see if you heard some of the stories that I heard. So I'm gonna give you a sentence and I'd like you just to repeat after me, or, or no, you say what you, you learned, okay? All right, children are meant to be seen and Wow. Um, money doesn't grow on Better be safe than. <laughs> Let me see what else do I have. Never trust a. Mm. Maybe that was just a Texas thing. Um, <laughs> we got some strange ones down there. Now, let's see, what was the other one? Uh, a bird in the hand is worth. Were you guys in my house? You see how this was, though, that we all know these things really very quickly. It wasn't like you had to say, oh, I don't remember that one. It's right there. You know, so perhaps, you know, we have a lot to learn, but perhaps we're, we have a lot to unlearn. And, and we want to come in here, we don't want to ignore the things we learned, but, but we certainly, we want to see what they were, and then we want to say, does that have value today? Because all of those sayings are about worry and doubt and don't risk. And you know, what did Jesus tell us about worry? He said, does it add any value to your life? Have you noticed that if you worry about anything, does it help anything at all? He said, so if it doesn't help anything at all, why do we do it? It's because we've learned it. You know, when you were a little infant, and you all were, you know, you all were, we were like sponges. So these people, they, they were saying things that they thought were helpful, but they weren't hopeful. Did we get that? So we took all this in like a sponge, and pretty soon we're just, you know, spouting it out. This is how I live, this is the truth. Well, I can tell you anything that doesn't allow you to feel like you're living in lightness and in this ever-expanding adventure that is your life is not true. 
It's something that you learned that you feel safe hanging on to it, but it's not allowing you to live in the light. You know, let your light shine. But this is the way that many of us started, and we have to see that. Um, C.S. Lewis wrote a book called The Screwtape Letters, and the um, old demon was named Screwtape, and the young apprentice demon was, was named Wormwood. You know, very uplifting names, right? And um, Screwtape is telling Wormwood, all you need to do to control people is plant a little bit of doubt, just a little bit of doubt, and as that doubt grows, you've got them. And that's what happened when people thought they needed to control you, either, you know, families or religions or school systems or cultures. But see, no one has your thumbprint. And see, you don't need to be controlled at all. You need to be reminded of how amazing you are. And that's what we do here. And at first, that can feel really uncomfortable. You mean I get to make this thing up? You know, I'm really, I've got the, the brush in my hand on this blank slate of my life. You do. And we're here to be with you as you know that. And it's so exciting to watch people live like that. Because when we do good and bad, when we live like that, we kind of forget who we are because we're in the struggle. There was a small town in Texas um, where Drummond's Bar when they wanted to put on an expansion because they wanted to grow their business of this bar. The small Baptist church across town vehemently opposed the bar expansion. And they had a lot of prayers and petitions for that bar not to expand and for it not to go through. Well, construction continued until a week before the bar was supposed to open and lightning struck that bar and it caught on fire and it burned to the ground. Now, the church folks were rather smug at the time, thinking, you know, whatever with that bar, until the bar owner decided to sue the church for either direct or indirect means of being in charge of that <laughs> church, of that bar burning down. The church denied all responsibility for having any involvement in that disaster, and in the court case said we had nothing to do with that. So the judge, looking at these papers, said, I don't know how to decide this case. It seems that I have a bar owner that believes in the power of prayer, an entire church congregation that does not. <laughs> so this good and bad, right and wrong, nobody wins, right? And so we have to really lighten up. We have to lighten up at these stories that we are just so right and people are so wrong because it blocks your life experience from happening. So, I've got some, a story to tell you. And I would not like to talk to this adult. I'd like to talk to that little kid in you, okay? So, so Jesus told us to be with this kingdom of heaven. You gotta be with your little kid. So, remember, you were a little kid. Let me tell you a story. There was once a fish named Marlin, and his spouse was named Coral, and they lived in a sea of anemone because they were clownfish. The only problem was Marlin didn't have a sense of humor being a clownfish, and people kind of worried about that. But anyway, they were living in the sea of, of anemone, and they had 400 eggs that were going to be hatched, and they were down in this little tunnel. And so, um, as life happens, a big shark flew, swam by, as, as it happens in the ocean, and Coral swam down to save her eggs, and the shark got Coral and all the eggs except for one. And Marlin was, you know, just traumatized, but went down to find his one egg, and he said to that little egg as he's holding it, I'm never going to let anything happen to you. And he named that little fish Nemo. So, Marlin, as we can imagine, is really afraid of the ocean. I mean, look what's happened to him. You know, all these people that said better safe than sorry, and you know, you know, you're meant to be seen and not heard. This is all their experience. And Marlin had every reason to be afraid. But what he kept saying to Nemo, don't go out in the ocean. 
Don't leave the sea of anemone, the little anemone patch. Don't try, don't risk. And we know where Marlon was coming from, but was that helpful to Nemo? Nemo had a little gimp fin, and he kept saying to anybody around Nemo, oh, he can't swim very well and take care of him and be careful about him because he's not, you know, he's kind of has a problem. And Nemo kept saying, Dad, this isn't the way I want to live my life. And so we know that um, Nemo um, swims out into the blue because he can't live in that kind of consciousness, and he swims out into the ocean, and he gets picked up by a scuba diver, taken back to the scuba diver's home, who happened to be a dentist, and stuck in a um, fish tank. So the story, of course, is called Finding Nemo. And Marlin spins now, he has to go out in the blue because he cares so much about his son. And Marlin is befriended by who? Dory, right, and Dory has no short-term memory. And so Dory is like those people that come into your life and you've got the big story of how your life isn't working and you're analyzing the darkness and somebody, maybe you run into somebody here at Unity Church and they go, ooh, that's an awful story. Would you like to tell another one? Right, and Dory just couldn't like hang on to Nemo's, I mean, Marlon's big story of woe and lack and problem. And in fact, she kept saying, you know, she'd forget Nemo's name and she'd go, are we looking for Mario? Are we looking for Elmo? Are we looking for Fabio? And he kept going, no, Nemo, Nemo. But you could see that he was needing to let go of his story because she couldn't hang on to it. So they go through all kinds of things. They get bit by jellyfish, and they get uh, swim. They swim with with turtles, and they do all kinds of things that Marlin would have never done if he wouldn't wouldn't have been trying to find Nemo. And he befriends Dory, who again can't agree with his story because she can't remember it. We all need friends like Dory. And at one point, they get swallowed up by a whale, and. Marlon is exhausted, and he said, I spent my whole life trying to make it okay for Nemo, and he said, I promised Nemo that nothing would ever happen to him. And Dory looked at Marlon, and she said, what a strange thing to promise someone. She said, if nothing ever happened to him, nothing would ever happen to him. What kind of life would that be if nothing ever happened to us? If nothing ever happens, we have no idea about how we get to play with this life. So she said, that's the weirdest thing I ever heard, to tell somebody nothing's gonna ever happen to you. And at that point, they're, they, the whale is trying to swallow them and they're hanging onto the whale tongue and, uh, and Marlon says, what should I do? And Dory said, you gotta let go. You gotta let go. And they fall down into the whale and the whale spurts them out similar to the Jonah story, and there they are at the uh, port where Nemo will eventually end up, and they find each other, but ne Marlin all this time was looking for Nemo, but who Marlin found was Marlin. So this journey that we're on, we don't want to certainly analyze and stay stuck in the darkness, but we have to understand where it came from. We have to become friends with both sides and to understand that there's gonna be moments of insight, and you'll be zipping along with that insight and feeling really great, um, Nancy Addy getting her wings, you know, and, and that's really fun. And then, for, then the next moment, there's gonna be the next experience of something that wants to be awakened in you. Have you all noticed that the thing that you thought was the worst thing that could happen to you ends up being the best thing that can happen to you? Have you noticed that? Yeah, you know, it's, it's that thing that, in fact, you gotta watch it if you start saying, oh, I hope this will never happen to me. I could never go through that. Uh, it's kind of a setup because, um, because your soul is like, are you kidding? I'm unlimited pure potentiality. I don't know what story you've got about better be safe than sorry, but it's not true. You know, so if there's something you think you can never experience, it may, it may be the thing that's gonna come up in your life to remind you that you can experience it.